Just over a week before the crucial G20 summit, China on Monday released the 2023 edition of what it called Standard Map, showing Arunachal Pradesh as part of its own territory. Surrounded by two hostile nations, China in the north and Pakistan in the west, India has to do a lot more than lodging protests to protect its interest. And that's where DRDO comes in. Established in 1958, the Defence Research and Development Organisation, or DRDO, operates under the Ministry of Defence. It is entrusted with the critical task of designing, developing and enhancing defence technologies. It is a network of more than 50 laboratories which are engaged in developing defence technologies covering various disciplines like aeronautics, combat vehicles, engineering systems, missiles, naval systems, life sciences and agriculture. Presently, the organisation is backed by over 5,000 scientists and about 25,000 other scientific, technical and supporting personnel. One of its achievements is the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program, which was the brainchild of APJ Abdul Kalam. Under its several missiles like Prithvi, Agni and the latest Nag were developed. From making hand sanitizers and masks during COVID to providing research and innovation in military technologies, DRDO has been doing it all. But the organization has come under criticism from time to time over project delays and for shooting over the allotted budget. Last year, a CAG report had also flagged irregular closure of projects, declaring them successful despite non-achievement of one or more key objectives and parameters. In March this year, the Centre informed the Parliament that 23 of the high-priority 55 projects taken under the Mission Mode category had missed their deadlines. Now the government has decided to revamp the organisation. For that, the Ministry of Defence recently set up a nine-member committee under the chairmanship of K. Vijay Raghavan, the former Principal Scientific Advisor to the government. An ISRO scientist has also been included in the committee. The panel has been tasked with coming up with a list of recommendations within three months to restructure the role of DRDO. But what has been ailing DRDO? This organization has been a victim of historical baggage. I mean, for the first uh, couple of decades, this was the only go-to agency of the government for defense R&D. And uh, the policies which, uh, within which it operated they were fuzzy in the sense that it was supposed to do everything indigenization, you know, developing state-of-the-art technology and so on. But there was a time when it, it had a finger in every pie, right? So it became too big an organization, uh, you know, unrealistic expectations that, you know, within very limited budget, the DRD will, you know, somehow produce spectacular results. Then you had this problem of, um, uh, you know, the services being too demanding. And the DRD itself on its part, little inclination to... Uh, to review the projects which are not doing uh, well and to you know kind of exit them most importantly the budget allocations for defense r and have been quite dismal the government plans to introduce changes in tune with the u.s defense advanced research projects agency or darpa model which was set up in the same year as drdo and is a dedicated wing engaged in actively funding and researching innovative defense technologies so will the revamp bring a decisive change in the approach of drdo the one line in the government uh, declaration was DARPA and DRDO. Now, DARPA and DRDO are two completely different animals. DARPA is 500 people, 600 people, project managers. They define and they work with the industry. And they even have programs which very clearly are to find out the technology limits. And there is a tiredization of what the ultimate objective is. You do not even have that kind of a scientific thinking. You don't even have the knowledge to define those projects. So, you can, you can do lip service. You can do lip service, which is what we are very, very good at. We are so window dressing sensitive today. So we do things to tick. That needs to stop. According to a statement by the Indian Defence Research Wing, the revamp will focus on shedding certain ongoing tasks that can be managed by academia or private players. The DRDO's focus will shift towards high-end futuristic technologies in air, ground, maritime and space systems. So will DRDO be able to emulate the success of ISRO? It's not a foregone conclusion that the ISRO model can be replicated in defence. Uh, ISRO is focused only on one area of research. Unlike DRDO, which is into everything, the attention gets diffused. Secondly, ISRO doesn't have an external client. 
whereas DRDO is uh, is catering to its clients, namely the services, which are very demanding. The DRDO has suffered from, uh, I think, excessive uh, uh, bureaucratic control, uh, both in terms of financial control and administrative control. Also, ISRO has really learned to live with the limited uh, budgets. Although DRDO has been subjected to multiple hurdles, experts believe that a streamlined approach towards building high-end military technology and a focus on innovation will reap rewards for the armed forces. The revamp promises an effective change in DRDO, but to compare its successes with ISRO would be unfair on both the organizations as they operate in extremely different domains. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. She has ambitions of becoming a brand. Business Standard